Good afternoon and a very warm welcome. I am Mukta Kandiyal. Welcome you all in our this live interactive session. And you are watching our this program on PME Vidya channel number 10. And the topic we have today in the table for discussion is interdisciplinary way to learn social science. And as always, we are also joined by one of the experts who will be giving us thorough guidance and information on the topic we will be discussing today in our session. And the expert we have in the studio is Professor M. V. Srinivasan Sir is from DESS NCRT New Delhi. Uh, namaskar Sir, bahut bahut swagat aapka. And uh, to all our info uh, viewers and students out there, I would like to inform that if you have any questions, any queries that you would like to raise with us, you can call us on our number that is 8800440559. You can also write to us at dth.class10 at the rate cit.nic.in. So without any further delay, let's start today's session and I will directly head to Srinivasan sir. And I'll ask uh, sir. The topic uh, we have today for interdisciplinary ways. So, what are ways we are going to learn today in our this classroom? Thank you, uh, first of all, for the CIT for uh, giving this opportunity to uh, interact with you on an important uh, topic uh, generally discussed in the academic cycle, circles of social sciences. And uh, if you know, um, you have been studying social sciences. Uh, many of your students, some of your parents also. And uh, social sciences is one of the important subject, uh, though in the material life of these new education systems that are emerging, uh, people are interested in science and mathematics and so on. But if you look at deeply in your heart, social science is the one subject which is closely uh, connected to our daily life. And social science is also emerging, one of the important, important career um, for the young people actually. So how to learn, how to understand social science, how to understand uh, concepts in social science becomes very, very important. In that context, uh, today I'm going to uh, discuss something mm -hmm. about uh, how we can understand social science in a better manner. Mm -hmm. Many times students may think that social science is a very uh, boring subject. It may be we are not able to remember dates and so on. And it is also because of many issues uh, uh, confronting the social sciences and let us discuss about those issues and in my view today I'm going to discuss with you that uh, one of the best ways to learn social sciences mm -hmm. uh, is to approach um, based on the interdisciplinary framework actually. Okay. So that's why uh, I chose this topic today. Okay. And sir, as we know that our uh, today's session is based on social science subject and one of the important topic in social science is globalization. So I would like to request you to first uh, briefly give our uh, students information about what globalization is actually and how this topic can be learned using interdisciplinary approach. Okay. Thank you. So uh, before I uh, start thinking about discussing about globalization and uh, let me give you a task to you and you and also to our uh, anchor and look at the uh, screen. In the screen you will see a, um, a topic, set of topics and then um, uh, the book or part and uh, students uh, you also t can take a pen and just start thinking about it. I am um, giving you some 18 concepts, important concepts that you may be seeing in the textbooks. Uh, it may be, uh, you may be in different classes. Um, look at the, these concepts and then see in which book. I know the students, uh, some, in some schools you may be studying four textbooks, history, geography, economics, political science, or you may be studying one textbook, but they may, have be, they may be having four sections, history section, geography section, economic section, political science section. So you just mark uh, this concept under which book or which part of the social science uh, this may come. I am listing out uh, all these 18 concepts to you, the concept uh, groundwater use, Number one, number two, sustainable development. Number three, globalization. Number four, renewable resource. Number five, multinational company. Number six, crude oil. Number seven, forest conservation. Number eight, uh, deforestation. Number nine, biodiversity. Uh, number 10, Britain Woods. Number 11, fixed or floating exchange rate. Number 12, wages and profits. Number 13, environmental degradation. Number 14, World Trade Organization. Number 15, International Financial System. Number 16, Industrial Location or Relocation. Number 17, Pollution. Number 18, Industrial Development. Can you guess, uh, uh, Muktaji, uh, for example, groundwater use? Which textbook it may have, like it may be used or it Sir, may be... I think it could be categorized under Geography. Geography, yeah. Uh, you may be partly right, it, you can find it in some other book also. Okay, that's why if you want to study, mm -hmm. uh, you can just go back to the NCRT mm -hmm. textbooks, you mm -hmm. can see how this word is used, not only history, mm -hmm. not only geography, but mm -hmm. also in economics. 
and but also in the political science textbooks. Mm. And similarly, uh, how about Britain Woods? You, have, you can just guess how. Uh, so geography, I'll again with geography. How <laughs> Britain Woods is something to do with the economics, okay, but economics. you can see in economics mm. and history. Mm. So uh, students, you just uh, mark the way I marked for number three, globalization. Globalization you can find in history, mm. geography, and economics. Mm. Okay. So let me go to the, uh, so uh, for all these things, uh, in the end of my session, in the last slide, not screen, you can see the uh, tentative answers. So you just wait for till the uh, last end of the, uh, minute of the mm -hmm. uh, end of the session. Let me uh, take about globalization. We know that the globalization, what is globalization? And uh, globalization means the way, for example, you may be having a, a mobile phone here. This mobile phone may be coming from, um, it may be produced in China. But it's a technology or the um, important chips may be coming from Taiwan, it may be coming from Japan, and you can see the uh, it's also assembled in Chennai. Okay, so this is an example of globalization. This means you must be able to guess. Uh, you get goods um, produced in different parts of the country, assembled like uh, made in different parts of the country and assembled different parts of the world, in fact. If you look at uh, today's many technologies, including the technology that you are watching television, its spare parts are made in different countries and it is assembled in different countries and it is sold in different countries. This kind of interconnections in the production process is called a globalization. And what I told you uh, in terms of production is one dimension of globalization. Globalization also involves many things. And if you see why I told you that globalization is an important concept, and look at this uh, screen here. If you look at this book, the NCRT's book, uh, Indian Contemporary World, you can see a, a, a full-fledged chapter. Uh, chapter called um, Making of the Global World. So if you look at this chapter, you can see the, uh, the entire history of globalization. Uh, globalization is not something new and um, it is almost 3000 years old. Okay. And it emerged from the Silk Route, even before Silk Route, um, uh, you can see the symptoms of globalization. People were like Indian uh, people uh, for um, hundreds of years, Indian Ocean was involved in extensive trade activities. Okay, Chera, Sola, Pandyas, they were involved in trade activities. And uh, so you will see in the history component, uh, the history of globalization is discussed. Okay, so if you want to know more about uh, globalization, you have to see the history component, history chapter. Okay, and many terms that I showed you, if you look at this textbook part, uh, Britain Woods. The Britain Woods is shown here actually. It is the, it is the emergence of the WTO. Before it was called um, uh, World Trade Organization, it was called Britain Woods system. Okay, where countries engaged in trade agreements. Okay, so if you want to know about globalization, you have to see not only um, history, about understanding the globalization, look at, look at the screen actually. Like if you look at the screen, I am showing the first page of the um, uh, one chapter in Indian uh, uh, NCRT textbook called Understanding Economic Development. If you look at this book, and in one of the chapter, which I am showing in the screen, uh, if you look at the, this chapter, Globalization of the Indian Economy. So you will see in uh, history, the entire chapter on how globalization emerged. And what was the situation? Okay, and uh, if you, uh, it's described actually. If you want to know about the what is the modern forms of globalization? Okay, for example, IT. Uh, for example, many softwares produced in Bangalore or in Gurugaon or in say in Pune, uh, they are sold. They are sold in America, Europe, and African countries. And people don't move to sell those things actually. It goes uh, through satellites. Okay, so this kind of modern globalization, modern forms of globalization happening in the in, in through technology. They are all discussed in the economics textbook. So if you want to know globalization per se, and you merely looking at economics textbook may not be sufficient because it gives you only uh, the, the contemporary, the modern forms mm -hmm. of globalization. But if you want to know the historical dimensions of globalization, and for example, the uh, today we are talking about, the, you must have seen in the 18 concepts, multinational company. Today we are talking this term, but if you look at one of the oldest multinational company, who is, you know, East India Company who have ruled India in the uh, 18th and 19th century. So if you want to know the earlier forms of globalization, earlier forms of multinational company, we need to understand about how the East India Company has functioned. Okay. So for understanding about globalization, uh, both history and geography 
and understanding about uh, those ideas is important. But I will also uh, tell you that globalization does not end there. For example, suddenly in Kerala, some years before, one multinational company was told to close their shop, their own uh, uh, um, clothing making uh, shop. So they were, they were asked to close, shut down their uh, company because the water was exploited. The drinking water, the water used for farming activities were exploited more than what was promised by the company. Okay, so globalization is also something to do with geography. If you look at the geography textbook of NCRT, you can see the globalization is discussed in a chapter on agriculture. Okay, so in agriculture extensively, for example, many companies, many multinational companies are selling. If you go to, today you go to any shop, uh, buy some oil, you will find that 90% of the um, oil that you are going to buy in the shop, they were all made by the multinational companies today. So if you want to know, and if you're not, uh, many grains actually, many companies are now multinational companies, for example, um, American company, Parley, like, um, is one of the biggest multinational company producing grains and supplying, selling to the whole world actually. Okay, similarly, in, in, in India also many agro companies are emerging. So it has implications on agriculture. Okay, so if you want to know about uh, globalization, merely history is not sufficient. And economics is also not sufficient. You also have to talk, read geography component. So you will see in the uh, NCRT textbook, uh, 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 if you look at the chapter on agriculture, look at the screen, the impact of globalization on agriculture, that is discussed. So you have to pull together, as a student, if you want to understand about a globalization as a whole, from the holistic viewpoint, you have to pull together all the important information available from the diff different textbooks, and then put it, develop your own notes so that any question asked in the board examinations or anywhere and you can easily answer and you can also see the linkages between various areas i'm going to discuss in the end of it so uh, you can see the linkages between history geography political science economics and many uh, important intricate concepts for example um, uh, let us take um, cashew net the cashew net you won't believe it uh, India is processing uh, most of the cashew nut, like, um, and, but most of the cashew nut is imported from the Brazil. Coffee, we use a lot of coffee in our houses, in shops actually, but most of the coffee, the quality coffee that you are all drinking, we are all drinking here in this country, they come from um, Latin American countries actually. Okay, so why they produce coffee in the, the fields there and that why they are processing here? So for that you need to understand the geography, the land and the climate conditions, and you also need to understand the wages, okay, because of the wages prevailing in different countries, companies uh, procure the, uh, the crops in one place and process it in another place and sell it in another place, okay. So you need to understand the history and you need to understand the geography, you also need to understand the political part of the globalization. For example, unless countries allow, for example, in 1980s, till 1980s, uh, many multinational companies were not allowed in, in India to sell up, like to shut up their shops, they shut up their companies. In fact, some companies were all asked to shut their um, companies and uh, look out for some other countries. So today, many companies are coming and setting up their own shops. That is also because of the policy changes done by the government. For that, you need to understand the political dimensions. Okay. So um, this way of looking at various subject areas, various discipline is called interdisciplinary approach. Okay, so I think that's where the interdisciplinary approach that we have the topic for today is focusing on. That is, it's the composition of everything like you told, like look, globalization is not just in the history geography, it is the composition of everything. Okay, so another uh, important topic in the social sciences, sustainable development. And I think uh, today, uh, from many, uh, since long now, many big, big companies and brands are, you know, more focused on the being sustainable. They have taken an initiative. So what is it? And could that topic also be learned using this interdisciplinary approach? Certainly, it, it mm -hmm. gives a lot of scope for um, mm -hmm. uh, working with the interdisciplinary approach. Uh, students, uh, this is an important concept. You can find it in many, many, many chapters of history, geography, and uh, economics, and to some extent political science also. Okay. Sustainable development means um, you have to consume, you have to use goods and services in such a manner that you are living it for the next generation. That's what sustainable development means. All your developmental activities need to be sustainable. For example, if you are using less and less oil, if you are using less and less petrol, less and less petrol, like uh, if you are using, uh, if you are saving electricity, if you are saving even drinking water, 
that means you are on the path of sustainable development. Sustainable development is a practice which is essential for every person living on this earth, not only in India or America, everywhere. Okay, so sustainable development is an important concept we all have to understand. That is one of the reasons why in 1990s, uh, the Supreme Court said that um, NCRT should uh, be the uh, monetary agency for the whole country to look at environmental education, how the children were introduced to the idea of sustainable development. Okay. So, if you look at the system development concept, that is also available in the uh, different uh, social science textbooks. Look at, I am just showing you one example. If you look at the screen, uh, the concept of system development is available in the uh, first chapter of class 10 um, job therapy textbook. If you look at this textbook and uh, social science, contemporary India 2, you can see the, uh, the many chapters. The first chapter I would suggest you, very strongly suggest you, uh, resources and development. If you go to resources development, you will find what is system development, Rio de Janeiro's summit. So the conceptual introduction is given in the first chapter of the class 8 textbook. And you can see in all, geography is one textbook where you will find majority of the chapter, out of six chapters. You can find in the forest and wildlife resources, water resources, agriculture, minerals and energy resources, manufacturing industries. Almost all the five chapters has enormous scope for understanding about system development. Okay, so it is with regard to geography. Why we have to protect our forest? Why we have to engage in afforestation? Why we have to plant more and more trees in this country? And same case, for example, if you want to understand about agriculture, for example, you can look at the, uh, I'm just giving you one data. Uh, Look at this data. If you look at uh, this data, this uh, line chart shows that how much we are able to produce using our land. India is uh, one country where our land is highly fertile. Okay? We began our life, our independent life in 1950s with a very, very low productivity. For example, in 1950s, this uh, chart shows, this data is taken from the pocket book of agricultural statistics. And if you, this data shows that in 1950s, uh, we were able to produce 900 kilograms of rice. How much? 900 Nine. kilograms of rice. rice. Nine here means it's a quintal. Mm. If you look at the uh, y-axis, it is the 100, 100, like one quintal means, so like a, uh, five means it is a 500 uh, kilos. Okay. And uh, in the x-axis, you have the years. So if you look at in 1950s, we were able to produce only 900 kilograms of um, um, paddy. Okay. And this has increased to in out of every two and a half acres, hectare. It's called hectare. You must be started learning about um, uh, in, uh, in chapter on agriculture. So uh, from 900 uh, kilograms of paddy, today we have reached level of how much? In 2018-19, 26, the number 26 there. Okay, so 26 shows that we are able to produce now 2,600 kilograms of rice. paddy. Okay, if you look at the paddy, the wheat, which is in blue color line, and uh, again, we started with the 900 kilograms only, but mm. wheat cultivation, wheat productivity, our, for every two and a half acres, we mm. are able to produce now 3,500 kilograms of wheat. wheat. Okay, and if you look at the red mark, red one, the pulses, um, harar dal, thur dal, um, <coughs> so if you look at the, uh, the pulses variety, last 60 years we are not able to increase the productivity. Yes. We are able to produce only about 700 mm -hmm. kilograms uh, for so every total. In the span of, of 2011, it went up, but again it went it's, down. It mm -hmm. is going down. It's mm -hmm. not going up. Mm -hmm. Same case with cotton. If you look mm -hmm. at cotton, we were able to produce 100 kilos, mm -hmm. but even after 60 years we are not able to produce mm, beyond Much. 400 kilos actually. So if you look at, I should, you also have to carefully this day see data. Mm -hmm. Between 1952 and 1990, within 40 years time, the production, the productivity has shot up from 900, 900 kilograms to 1,700. But from 1990 to 2020, in the last 30 years, mm -hmm. the steep rise did not happen in the same way in the later part of our last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Why it is happening? It's also because we have used extensively the petrol, the, the petrochemicals. Okay, we have used chemical fertilizers. We have used um, inorganic uh, like manures in such a manner that the land is not sustainable. That is why the productivity is not going up now. 
so we have to look for sustainable ways of cultivating in agriculture that is why in recent times you must have been seen in the um, uh, earlier programs uh, we were talking about green revolution where that like in the initial years we were able to increase our production level and productivity level also but in the last 30 years the productivity is not going up that is because we are we are not um, using the fertilizer in an appropriate manner so many farmers are now going for organic farming that is it also saves the land because of the extensive or inappropriate use of fertilizers land has become has been becoming um, less fertile less fertile so uh, when land become and also you will find enormous amount of land thousand mm -hmm. lakhs and lakhs of hectares of land has become salinated we are not able to get drinking water so the, the what we get in the even if you are uh, digging your bore wells you are getting only salty water because the water the land the ground water use the, the, the ground water has become salinated so we get uh, we are not able to get that's why you will find uh, many affordable families they are using ro to remove the salt salty aspect of the uh, water so uh, for all these purposes if you want to have a good safe drinking water it is necessary that we need to uh, follow system development so if you want to understand about system development and you can see in the uh, not only in the geography textbook in geography textbook every chapter you can see about the conservation of forest conservation of water and water harvesting systems and um, many topics are having mm. great potential to understand about system development and if you look to uh, economics component uh, uh, the chapter on say about development you can see the the use of the um, how the groundwater uh, usage is described so this chapter also you will find um, why the current development practices are not sustainable so we have to practice many uh, ways of sustainable development practices these are available in the um, public domain and um, if we follow this uh, like, so if you understand the if you want to understand about sustainable development merely um, um, geography alone is not sufficient we also have to look at the economic dimension okay so in order to understand sustainable development um, uh, you need to learn more from the geography and also from the economics okay that's the uh, way one can look at the system development practice okay so i showed you that why the agricultural productivity is uh, decelerating now the productivity is not growing the way uh, we wanted so this means that we have to use sustainable development practices so that the we are leaving some amount of natural resources for the future generation it is not only about agriculture also about industries also about many service activities okay we have to use more and more cycle instead of going by auto and taxis and cars okay we have to use uh, less amount of uh, iron or metal based materials so that we will give some amount of iron for the iron ore for the future generation okay so in order to understand the system development you have to uh, uh, look at the topics in a disciplinary like in a disciplinary perspective let me um, uh, look at the screen if you look at the uh, um, screen I told you about some I would like to share some uh, interdisciplinary uh, issues of interdisciplinary some important ideas why we have to understand it if you learn in, from the interdisciplinary perspective there are some advantages look at the screen the first advantage is that we can understand the interconnections between various disciplines so discipline when I refer to discipline is nothing but the way we organize our knowledge systems okay suppose you are having lots of books in your uh, house for reading and if you want to organize things you need to see how it can be like um, organized stories as a separate section so different sections you can um, keep it similarly the knowledge is also uh, growing mm. okay so if you want to organize knowledge and then um, better way is to call them as discipline so the discipline is organizing way of knowledge okay that is why you are studying history separately you are studying science separately mathematics separately languages separately okay so the knowledge emerged in the last say about 200 300 years has been classified into different groups they are also having some common characteristics okay so uh, but if you learn only through one uh, one discipline say for example i will learn only through science it may not be sufficient so you need to understand the subjects from the interdisciplinary way okay and you also understand the others viewpoints if you learn things in an interdisciplinary manner you will also understand um, others viewpoints and you can also develop empathy and interdisciplinary approach also is helpful to reduce biases some people may think that only scientific way one can understand things like that it is not sufficient 
Okay, you also have to look at the ethical dimensions of the um, other area, whatever the argument that you are put forward. So learning through interdisciplinary approach by looking at various domains of knowledge, whether it is a history, geography, economics, political science, or science, you can develop a better understanding about the society in which we are living. Okay, so with that, um, I think um, uh, I'm able to explain what is this interdisciplinary approach. So not only um, uh, globalization or sustainable development, there are many topics in the social science textbooks, poverty, food security, industrial development. So all these topics, if you are able to call out the separate notes mm -hmm. by bringing from different discipline, develop notes by a particular concept, you'll be able to refer very easily, you can understand very easily, you can also see, um, uh, you can also develop deeper understanding about the concept better. So the best way to learn social sciences and uh, so that you will find interesting is that use the interdisciplinary approach. Refer from various subject areas on the same topic and take down notes and then you can prepare for your um, career or better understanding about the topic. Definitely. And so I really hope students uh, who are throughout uh, with, with us throughout this session definitely took some great notes out of today's session. And sir, uh, at the starting of the session, you also hinted our students that there will be, uh, you know, uh, the answers to what you have portrayed on the screen on the starting of this uh, session. Yeah. If you look at, um, let me tell you the uh, uh, answers here. Answers, if you look yeah. at uh, uh, groundwater use, you can see in the geography and economics textbooks. And number two, sustainable development, you can see in the geography textbook and economics textbook. And um, globalization, you can see in history textbook and also geography textbooks and also in economics textbook. Okay. And um, in some sense, uh, globalization also discussed in the political science and sociology textbooks, mm -hmm. but at the higher secondary level. And if you look at a renewable resource, you can see in the geography textbooks more frequently used and also in economics textbook. Okay. When we talk about the developmental aspect, uh, what is appropriate development means. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, some amount of economics is also discussed, uh, this topic of uh, renewable resource. If you look at multinational company, uh, the multinational company is starting from the East India company mm -hmm. and to the latest multinational companies that are operating in India. For example, if you look at this textbook, um, class 10 um, economics textbook, uh, you can see the um, uh, page number, yeah, I can, I can see the uh, how the one uh, car company mm. located in Chennai, if you look at, let us this work out this activity, and Ford Motors, the company name is mentioned in the book. So you can see the, the um, uh, modern multinational company, how modern multinational company. So not only in economics textbook, but mm. you can also see in the history textbook. Okay. So if you look at um, uh, crude oil, you can see in the history textbook. If you look at the screen, crude oil, it is there in the geography textbook also. Forest conservation, you can see in chapter on wildlife resources, but also in the um, class 6, class 8, class 9, 10 history textbooks. Okay. History textbooks extensively discussed about the forest, people living in forest, people and uh, colonization, you will find generally in the history textbooks, but our NCRT textbooks provide opportunities to, so you can see in the geography component also, for example, in geography, the colonialism, colonization period, what was happening in the agriculture is dis described. So history, geography, economics, you can find it actually. If you look at biodiversity, it is there in the economics and geography. And if you look at beta notes, as I told you, it is part of the WTO systems. And history, economics and geography, you can find. And fixed and floating exchange rate, generally you can find in the economics textbook, particularly at the higher secondary level. But surprisingly, you can find discussion of this topic, uh, how the exchange rate happens, which country follows, why this kind of exchange rate is discussed in history part of uh, social science textbook of NCRT. And wages and profits you can see in the history textbook and also in economics textbook. Uh, environmental integration you can find in the geography textbook and economics textbook. And multinational companies, again, uh, you can find in all the three areas, it is re getting repeated. International financial system, um, uh, the way international uh, banks like the World Bank, IMF, so they are all discussed also in the economics textbook as well as in the history textbook. Industrial location you can find in the history and the geography. And um, pollution you can see in the all the three subject areas, history, economics and geography textbook. And industrial development also you can see in the history, economics and geography. So as a student, if you are able to mobilize, if you are able to pull together all these ideas available in the different, different textbooks and put it in, the, in your notes in a coherent manner, you will be able to understand 
much better the social sciences. Yes, and so that that was our session based on interdisciplinary ways. Srinivasan sir has very well explained that how important this interdisciplinary approach is and what exactly it is. You can put uh, different different ideas from different different resources and put it one place and that can be concluded yeah. as an interdisciplinary yeah. approach. Yes, so I hope students would understand our today's session and would take again would take a great notes. You can watch out this program on uh, our YouTube channel as well that is NCRT official later on. For now we are wrapping up this session but before that I would like to thank Srinivasan sir once again for delivering this informative session with such facts to all our students. Thank you sir. Thank Thank you. And thank you to all our viewers as well who got connected with us throughout this session. Stay connected to PM with the channel and CRT official in the same way. Namaskar.